Welcome back to the Super Data Science series on PySpark. In the last series, or excuse me, in the last video, we were working with RDDs. Now, to continue, we're going to actually be working with um, working in data frames with PySpark. And the importance of this, just to continue working with our data, is because usually in artificial intelligence, in big data, in machine learning, the majority or at least a good percentage of the time that you will be working on your projects. It's going to be spent manipulating data, cleaning data. You know, it's a, it's a crucial and key element and the more that you know, the better that you're going to be able to perform your your project and the more efficient you're going to be with your operations. So, that being said, let's dive right in and we're going to actually be downloading a CSV file to be working with for the purpose of this tutorial in this series. So, let's navigate to that right now. We can go to the following um, web address. If you're not a member of Kaggle, I highly recommend joining. It's a really good place to just take a look. Um, you know, there's a lot going on. They have competitions. There's uh, some data sets that you can work with. You can experiment. You can build kernels. It's just a great uh, place for machine learning data science in general where it'll give you some ideas or um, you know, think about maybe a cross between a little bit of like a GitHub just specifically for data science. But uh, we're going to be working with a the following. It's um, a pretty a decent sized file. I mean, it's not gigantic, but we're going to be working with the following CSV. It basically is a data set that contains transactions made by credit cards in September 2013. The data set presents transactions that occurred in two days where we have 492 frauds out of 284,807 transactions. The data set is highly unbalanced. The positive class of frauds account for 0.172% of all transactions. Now this is an irrelevant at right now. It's just a data set that we're going to use to help explore data frames and take a look at data manipulation within PySpark and running it. And you can also see, you know, it's a, I guess you could say it's, you know, it's not huge, but it's not a uh, small data set either. So using this will give us a better idea. So you can join again, join Kaggle if you can, if you have to, if you're not a member already, just so you can download the data set, download the data set, load it into your environment in Jupyter. So what you would basically do is go to your home when you initially launch Jupyter Notebooks, and then you can just upload the file, and then we're going to be passing it into a path to pull it in. So once you have that, we can get started and we're going to start working on the following operations right now. So the first thing we want to do is actually to just make sure we have, we see our operations from the previous tutorial. You know, we're just going to continue in the same notebook, which is fine. We're going to, let's space it out a little just to keep it more organized. Let's do the following just to make sure. Let's mark. We also, the good thing is that you can run uh, SQL queries on PySpark directly uh, on your data, which is, is highly helpful and very efficient. We're going to get into it uh, eventually, but right now just to have an import statement, um, I want to just bring it into the notebook for now. That's PySpark.SQL import Spark session. It's going to start our session for working with SQL again. Just to, to add it in right now. We'll, we'll get to it eventually, but now we have our CSV downloaded and brought it. Not the zip file, you have to unzip it and just to upload the CSV file. It's pretty straightforward, clean data. So we don't have to do too much manipulation, which is nice, but you may work with uh, CSV files and other types of data formats that you will have to clean yourself. So being able to load and work in this way will be beneficial. You'll be able to, uh, you know, show the, the headers and manipulate the data frame and the RDDs um, so you can help clean them and clean the file that will uh, allow you to better run your project and your algorithm. So we're going to set, you know, the generic term for data frame. We'll see df equals spark.read.csv. Now we have to add in the path for the CSV. Straightforward credit card.csv. I apologize, before we run that, we have to actually jump back here real quick because one thing I have to do, or we have to do to run our data, we actually have to initiate the Spark session. So we're gonna use the following, Spark equals Spark session. 
Now this is just a basic example of app name and configuration. We're going to just run it. But we need to start our Spark session so the data frame will actually run. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize or it's not going to say that Spark can read it. So let's run the following. And we're going to run this again. All right. So our data frame is passed in. We have the credit card CSV uh, attached to our data frame. So to get started, you know, I know we said our ADs we were working with before, but we're going to concentrate on this data frame right now. And we can print the data type or we can actually see our data type of the data frame with the following command it's going to print it in a tree format so we're going to use the df since that's what we're calling our data frame df dot print schema parentheses and we're going to run it and you can see it does print it in a tree format and gives us a, a decent idea of what you know type of values we're looking at within our data okay so moving on we can also run the following commands. We can run, say, for example, we can run df dot head. All right, it's, it's going to give us a, a good idea of what uh, further information for our data frame. And you can see we have our row. We have uh, further information about our data frame that we can assist in visualizing. And I don't know, you want to pass in a certain value for a certain row or just manipulate a certain column. These are commands that are going to help you. We can also do df dot count, for example. Again, parentheses to call it on the data frame. And we're going to run it. Give it a second just to run, since again, it's a decent size data frame. Count should come back pretty soon. Or maybe it's just my machine. Your machine might run quicker. And you can see the count for ours is 284,808. All right. So say you want to get, you know, this CSV is, is numerical data. Say you want to get the mean, the standard deviance, the min, max, and count of numerical data columns in your data frame. And you can use the following command. If you don't specify the name of the columns, it's actually going to calculate statistics for all numerical columns within your data frame. So in order to do that, which is an awesome um, attribute of PySpark, we can do the following. Data frame again, whatever you call your data frame, that's fine. We're just working with the generic term DF dot describe parentheses and we also want to do dot show because we want to see it so we can visualize it all right and we're going to run that give it a second let's see what it comes back with all right and you can see it came back and we, we can see you know it has a summary it has our count for us on the data it has our mean it has our standard deviation min max you know, just with one simple command, it may seem, you know, like it's working with a lot of data, but it comes back quick. And it gives us, again, these are just insights and visualizations that give you an idea of the data that you're working with. Now, from here, you can expand upon it. From here, you can say, all right, I need to work with this specific column, or I'm looking at these specific values. I need to clean this table. And then you can also run SQL queries. We'll, we'll do some examples in uh, future videos of SQL queries. But right now, we're con you know, we, we built upon RDDs and now we're working data frames. Just to reiterate, you know, these are essential operations in any big data, data science, um, AI, machine learning, cybersecurity. It's crucial, you know, clean data, um, having accurate data values are uh, an essential part of the job. It uh, is going to take up, you know, a decent amount of your time just prepping and getting the data working. So the more tools and the better idea that you have for your data, the easier it is going to be to you for you to complete your projects and your algorithm and just to have more efficient code in general. So it's a great takeaway. All right, and to continue, we'll, you know, we'll do a few more examples, but I do highly recommend that you navigate to the following address. You can see it here, which you can get more information on working with data frames in Python. You can work with JSON files. We're working with CSV again, but you can just scroll through and it gives you some other examples. You know, we're running SQL queries, uh, global temporary review, but it, it's going to give you, you know, information in general and you can test out further examples with the CSV data. Well, let's jump back into it and take a quick look. Say you have null values in your data frame. So we want to use our data, data frame. So we don't want to work with our uh, null values. You can do drop now, which may be familiar uh, to people who have worked with Python before, but it's dropping your null values. And we're going to run a count on that again. Let's see. I'm not sure if this CSV, because I haven't run the drop nut on it, I haven't uh, removed no value, so we're going to find out what the return is. 
You just give it a second to run. Okay, so you can see we didn't have any null values. It's a clean data set, um, which is nice. You know, working from Kaggle, usually the majority of the data sets there are pretty easy and simple to work with. Uh, and say you want to fill the null values in the data frame with a constant number, you are going to use the following. We're going to use tr uh, df dot fill uh, and pick a number. Uh, we want to use, uh, I guess you could say negative one since it's it's a missing value. And we're going to do show. Let's take the first or top I don't know, five rows for our example. So let's replace our data with the fill, and we're going to show the, the top five. And you can see we have run, are only showing our top five rows. Now we don't have null values, but if you want to just, again, run, uh, you want to see what your top five values just to get a better idea, just run your uh, df show and pass in the column that you want. You know, these are, again, basic data frame uh, manipulations and commands. Please take the time if you have the chance to dive further into um, other commands, other possibilities. And as we go, you'll learn more. We're going to do some things, you know, slowly get more complex in our operations. But the takeaway is to be able to visualize here in PySpark, you know, to be able to pass in a CSV, a CSV value with such ease, especially if you're talking about big data, and to be able to run these uh, queries, especially being able to run SQL on it, again, we'll get into in the future, is a huge efficiency, is a huge advantage of using PySpark. So that being said, we're going to move on to the next video in our series. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please take a look at the documentation again on PySpark. And as always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will get up-to-date weekly information on what's going on in the industry, new courses, new materials. It's just a great resource to have and fantastic information to pay attention to. All right, I will see you guys in the next video in this series.